weekend there, uh, I'm, I'm coaxing the life with you. It's uh, just come up for eight years, it'll be eight years on the, the 7th of April that I come ashore for the fishing. I was 20 odd years of fishing before that, uh, with my father and my brother, uh, family boat, and uh, I come ashore, they asked me to come ashore at that time and uh, take a tow, and I wasn't very keen for a start, because I was, I was happy enough to fish in, and uh, uh, gradually uh, I said I would eat, and then I kind of changed my mind, I wouldn't eat, but uh, anyway, I'd said I would decide to get back on the job on a sort of full time basis. So I come ashore in April 1986. I come ashore with the boat, with the fishing. Uh, so it's come up for eight years now, and, and I'm just beginning to enjoy my life ashore now. I, 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 I realised I've been missing for the last 20 odd years, fishing the Heelands and one thing or other. And it's good, it's a big responsibility. Uh, you can, uh, well, it's a tying job, it's uh, a commitment. It's a, a big responsibility, it's a big upheaval in your family life as such. Uh, I have a family, I'm married, my wife and two of a family. Uh, they think they sacrifice quite a bit for the life boat along with me, uh, time-wise. Uh, we're kind of just hoping the car any day of the week will fancy and just pop off. Uh, we've decided to guess on the fault time basis, so it, uh, we'll just have to carry on doing that. And it's, uh, if we need time off, we can get it, obviously, but uh, we've got the like, arrangements, maybe a week to our head, uh, the dog can for what we're doing, and get the second course to stand in for us. So the wives, the wives have to be good enough, they have to be patient. Uh, uh, as I'm saying, a broke holiday, you can't just off into the car and what you ever need, or what Peter's need after that. You just kind of do that, so, unless you've got it organised for a while of heat. So in that sense, it's very tiring. It's a great commitment that you have to be committed to this job. It's not just a, uh, a little office job, eight to five job. It's only time and night time. And we're in call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year as such. So it, it, it's a big commitment in your life. And, and uh, it's a thing that you don't uh, take lightly. Uh, a lot of the lads here are doing here, they're good lads, and, and most of them are, are committed to the job that they're doing. We're all volunteers, there's nobody forcing us to come down and, and do what we've got to do. So, uh, as, a, as a crew, I believe we all voluntary, voluntary deal with our time and our energy and whatever you want, our commitment. It works better. Now, at times, spared more if we could say we've got X amount to do the job, it probably wouldn't work. Uh, we've the boat is a different thing. We, we, we've, uh, we're going to see with six lads, maybe seven in the decent kind of weather, but in really bad weather we'd need to see with six men, in fact it was possible. We've given with as little as five, and we've given with seven and eight, but uh, six is a normal sort of crew for that boat, uh, simply for a reason that uh, it has six seats in the boat and uh, we can all be strapped in in bad weather. Aboard the boat, uh, uh, I suppose I've got the overall command of the boat as such. Uh, one of the decisions that got to be made, it's me who's got to either mark him, it's me who's got to stand by them, it's me who has to bear a brunt for them if they do not turn out right. If they turn out right, good and well. If they make a wrong decision at the wrong time, it could cause a lot of damage and maybe a loss of life and uh, injury to crew members or a men to route the, the service. So I suppose it is a big responsibility, it takes a lot of thought. But he had said that. We're all a team, we all muck in, and we all work away on our sails. And it, uh, it's not about one man, it's not about the coach or the mechanic or uh, the crew members, it's a team one. And uh, as I said, uh, we have a good team at the moment. We have, uh, we have about 60 or 70 lads in the pool at the moment. Uh, a lot of young lads coming in, which is good to see. Uh, usually they'll go through a six month training period, uh, they'll get a medical, ISIC test. And if all that is in order, uh, once it, they've gone through a training period, we'll accept them at the crew if they're suitable and uh, integrate into the crew and they're, uh, the crew are happy enough with them to accept them into the crew. And, uh, obviously, they didn't uh, what they might like to get the boat, they have a bit of experience to get. Uh, but it's it's a life, it's a satisfying job. Uh, you are still allowed to do here at any time, at any night. And uh, they'll tell you it's a great job, it's, it's a, a bit of satisfaction. You, you're doing it for the community, you're doing it for your fellow man, 
you're doing it for, for nothing as such. And it's, it's good to do that. I mean, I'm on certain media, I can't understand why you do that kind of things uh, for nothing. Uh, how I'm only can do that kind of job for nothing. There's no uh, beneficial gain in it. But that, that's the way it is. It started off with that, and it'll be go, going on for that. And uh, it, it's to come for the hair I, I believe I was called into this job because I didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't want to, to, to take a job on such as to, to work out the fishing, but I believe in my idea that I was caught into this job. And uh, I believe there's a higher power above me, above anything else. And I, I think that I, now looking back in my life, I realise and believe, firmly believe, that there's a higher power led me into this. And I believe this is where I should be at this time. I feel that I was called into this job, but uh, honestly, I'm convinced of that. Uh, through my beliefs, I'm a, I'm a Christian and, and I believe that uh, I was called in a degree into this job. We do the fishing industry. We, we get a life one night away through in Scrapster. Uh, well, back in 1966, 67, I can't remember the date. Uh, it was another wild night and uh, we, we got the boat that time in Scrapster. And uh, we, we asked an awful lot of times, why do you do it? What's your motive for the end? What's your reason for the end? Why do you do these things? And, I said, you ask a lot of the way Glem's are mounted and the way he's put all in after the world. You can't really answer that. And I, I, I didn't know really care why we did it. I suppose to the degree, it's the, somebody has to do it. That's one answer, I suppose. But uh, from my own personal view, I feel I'm, I'm, I'm renewing something, I'm repairing something back to the community that I'm in. I've been a fisherman for 25 years, I said. And it, it, I feel I'm re repairing a wee bit of a uh, commitment back to men that's doing it for my, for my time. And that night of scraps that really let me see, I was involved a good bit in the life, but for a young man, 18 year old, I've been involved in the life with off and on. And uh, uh, we could do it with the lads with Johnny Stephen and uh, Dennis Sam and, and uh, Alec Ross and a lot of lads who was involved with them at the time, with their time, as coxswains and second mechanics, uh, second coxswains and Fred Kirtness as mechanic and that. And we, we, we sailed with lads. And, we felt an affinity with, with, it, with them, and uh, it was a natural thing to do from the, from the boat was uh, asked for a crew in 1989, 1978, 79. Uh, it was a natural thing to do to come forward and, and, uh, and uh, put one name forward for a crew. It used to be the first uh, five, six men off a pier put on the boat. But now they've changed it at that time. They said, well, we'll mark an organised sort of thing. We'll try and get a pool of men that we can get X amount to any given time. So uh, that's the way it, it works now. It's just, it's near case only off the street. It's, uh, it's obviously involved uh, as a crew, uh, with a trainer and one thing other. And I am convinced that up to this day, and I was called into this, and I believe this is far I'm supposed to be at this particular time in my life. And uh, I'm fully convinced of that. And I believe that uh, I came for a fact that from we get to see, uh, when the Maroons go off, there's an awful lot of folk are praying for a lifeboat crew. For a boat. I came out for a fact, it's been uh, passed on to me very personally, and I, and I, I, th I thank that folk for it. They had a concern to just to offer us up the throne of grace as such, to, to, for protection and, and one thing or another. And it's good to get the folk thinking about you the shore. And what I appreciate, uh, we didn't need it for, for money again or, or, uh, or fame or whatever, but it's fine just to get a thank you. Is a, is, uh, 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 Kent, you've done his job well. And then the job you're supposed to do, uh, I thought it was quite sufficient for the line of work that we ran. And it's good just to, to part of the community. It's, it's a phrase for our boat, and uh, it's good with part of the community. The community is involved quite a lot with schools and organisations, BBs and scouts and girl guides and whatever like else. So it's good just to hear the community get involved in the boat as well. Uh, the boat was, a lot of money was raised in this area. It was up eighty thousand pounds I think was raised in the Fraserburgh area and district at the cost of the overall cost of four hundred and forty thousand, four hundred and fifty thousand. So uh, it is a gross boat and it's it, it's got to serve the community here and it's uh, in its lifetime. But uh, it's good to be part of this thing. Part of the law. It's a big institution, it's a big organisation. But uh, every station is individual and every station's got your individualities and your your uh, characters, if you like, and it's 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 good to have a team of large 60, uh, 60, 70 men if we can all blend together and get on with the job of work that we're being uh, called to do. Uh, I feel it's uh, it's a great case of job satisfaction. Uh, 
it's there for the, the nether tigers, say, a bit for the, the sensory satisfaction, a day of summing for your fellow man. Uh, the golden rule is do it to others as you would like others to do it to you. And I believe myself, we used to go by that a, a, a great degree of our life. And it's good to see young lads taking a part in the lifeboat. Young men that uh, you think are responsible, maybe, you think that they're uh, playing about in cars and everything like that. It's good to see young men getting involved in things like this and uh, being committed to it, doing it every night and through the training, the first day, the radio, the radar, the navigation, you name it, and they're going through it, and it's, uh, it's a big commitment uh, they're being asked to do. And it's good to see young men getting involved in this day and age that we're living in. And I believe that we've got a good crew for uh, the years that lie ahead. I've only seven years, it's fully seven years to go. Before I retire, I've got to retire at 55. And it's good, you look around about you and you see some lads that are getting to the, queue, the crew of the food yard in the next day, 10, 15 years. They're going to go on a boat and be in his boat or a new boat, but uh, they're going to have the crew of the, the food yard. And I believe that uh, it's a big responsibility that's being led in men to do what they're doing. Yet there's always somebody there that's willing to take up that, that cry and, and uh, take up the, the commitment and the responsibility. And it's good to hear men do that. So it's, uh, we've, we're pretty secure for a few more months and the years of five years, the years of two. The present lifeboat is a time class. She's 47 foot long, powered with two 425 horsepower two-stroke Detroit diesels, which at full speed uh, push the boat along at 18 knots. Fuel consumption at that speed runs to 40 gallons of diesel per hour. But that isn't a problem at present because uh, the local oil companies all take in turns to give us fuel, which does help considering that the RNLI is a voluntary service and is funded totally by the public. So any help from that platform is greatly appreciated. So the, the engine of the vessel and the gearbox is American designed? The engines are American, they're Detroit diesel, made by General Motors, but the gearboxes are twin disc which are, I believe, made in Belgium. But the combination of the both, uh, both of them uh, is proved uh, ultra-reliable. And, uh, you know, the, the nature of the service, we have to be ready, you know, go any time, day or night. And uh, the last thing we want to be is worry about whether the engines will start or the gearbox will fail. And that's eight years the boat's been here. And touch wood, there's been no problems, as I said. The boat's launched, it's always done what it's set out to do, and uh, that gives us a lot of confidence not to worry about uh, the machinery side. Oh. 